Welcome to another episode of Moments with Muncie. We're really happy that you're back here. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, share, and do all the things that need to be done to get this out there. My name is Muncie Part. And today's uh, guest is someone that I believe is one of the people that have been able to uh, evolve in their career. And you'll get to find out how and what I mean by that. Ladies and gents, radio host, radio producer, club DJ, Oh, oh, superstar, reality TV oh, star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Naked, how are you doing? Super, super, man. So I'm great. No complaints. Thanks for coming because we've changed your episode so many times. Yeah. I, I was like, if Naked was a diva, he would have said, actually, guys, if you don't want to shoot with me. No, you know, okay. you know I've got your back. Oh, but also I've heard a lot from other DJs that you're just a good person. Look, I'm very chilled. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I can't compare myself to anybody else because yeah. I don't know those divas, yeah. how they behave, but I'm super chilled. Let's let's get to young naked growing up with siblings that all happen to also be entertainers. Mm -hmm. What was your place at home? Like wh where did you find yourself fitting in? I'm actually the boring one out of all my siblings. Mm. Um the other ones were outgoing, they were athletes, <laughs> they would get medals all the yeah. time. I even think my parents like them more than they like me. <laughs> you were running under the radar. Yeah, the very much under the radar. Mm. I was the quiet one. I still am. Mm. Um, I'm that one at home that I just chill and I listen and I soak mm. everything in. I'm still that kind of person. Look, my siblings really entertained me Yeah, growing up. Um, my bigger brothers not only entertained me, but yeah. they took care of me. They mm. protected me. They guided me. Um, they misled me when they were talking, <laughs> giving me, you know... Um, boy advice. Boy advice, like uh, sex education. <laughs> my goodness, I learned sex education from my big brother, Fortune. <laughs> Love and, yeah, Fortune. Mm, and all he did, he said, Q, friction, just friction. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, is that it? Are you done? And he said, yes, just remember, friction. <laughs> <laughs> that was my section. And in, in practice, you're like, this is actually not how it's done. Uh, you know. Then you um, said, "Are your brother?" You like, so what? Mm, what? What are you doing? No, I w <laughs> hey, those those two, uh, they misled me, but love them to bits. And I think with my younger sisters, um, I oh, love them. They taught me how to how to love, how to be mm. soft. You know, so I had look, I had the best childhood mm. ever. You you seem to have a very tight relationship with your with your siblings. They were at the metros with us, and you were sitting with them the entire time. You guys were having dinner as a family, and I was like, "This is actually so dope." Because people, you know, you grow you're very close with your siblings. You live with them, mm -hmm. but you all find your way um, to to find other groups of people or friends or whatever. And you see each other when you do see each other. Mm -hmm. uh, how how are you guys staying staying this close? And what? What led to that? Because you're not, you're always together. The crazy thing is, it's love. Yeah. Um, my mom is probably the best person mm. ever. Um, and she taught us when we were growing up that, hey guys, love each other. Yeah. The only thing that I can tell you guys to do is just love each other, mm. look after each other. And my mom loved kids. Mm. And the weirdest thing is, when we grew up, she had a crash, mm. which. I don't even think she made a profit from it, mm. but she loved the neighborhood, mm. uh, the neighborhood kids too. Mm. Um, like twenty years down the line, you'd still find kids that were there at her creation grade mm. are calling saying, wow. "Hey, I've passed my trick. Hey, I'm doing this. Hey, I've got my matric farewell." And I'm like, "Mama, like, how many kids do you have?" Mm. You know. So my mom probably has like. 500 mm. children that are and willing and able to do yeah, everything exactly for her mm. but also talk to her all the time now imagine having 500 600 children plus and all of them feel loved equally sure she's that kind of person so my siblings and i yes we we're a big family they've got like five six kids mm. each but we still as tight mm. as we were now i'm tight with the children mm. as You're i was tight with them growing up mm. yeah i'm that uncle I don't even regard myself as that uncle. Mm. I regard my, I regard them as my children mm. too. So when they are around the house, uh, or even sometimes when they call me, hey, Uncle Q, I want to come through today. Mm. Is it okay? I'm like, what do you mean? Mm. Is it okay? Like, like, just roll up. Yeah, like, 
dudes, roll up, let's hang. In fact, you should be here more often. Uh, you know, like just a couple of minutes that I've spent with you now talking about your family, because even when we see each other at work, we don't get to have a conversation like mm-hmm. this, is the palpable warmth that your family has. Mm. Um, I'm trying to understand a picture of, of love then, the love that you saw between your parents, not the love of yeah. siblings. How was that? Because you're a lover of love, okay? You must have seen this somewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> my, par- my parents, though. Um, look, they have a great romantic mm. story or their story is very romantic mm. i just found out not too long ago not too long ago that when they were growing up my dad used to actually write plays come and, on and the old lady like bega is staring <laughs> in all the plays so the hood was like how come every time this guy writes a play Ula, this one, Ula, okay. is staring. And, and the funny thing is we laughed at my dad because Apparently, it took him like eight years to hit it. Like, he's, <laughs> if, even though, like, my mom was staring all the time, she she said, "Look, I just thought we were friends." She didn't sit there and think something mm-hmm. is happening here. Nothing. She says, "I thought we were friends." He didn't say anything to me for eight years. That so is it's only after eight years when he said, "Hey, this is how I feel about you." I was like, "Actually, okay, cool." So. And the crazy thing is, um, MSU is in Middleburg. Mm. When, when you stand, which is where your family is yeah, from. Which, yeah. yeah, when you stand on the stoop, like my mom's mm. kitchen, a kitchen there, my mom's house, and you look across the township, you can actually see my dad's stoop. Like they, <laughs> they, they, they lounge. You know what I mean? And it's probably There's so like, much romance there, mm. I won't lie. I mean, yeah. So, so all those little things from, you're like, so you guys grew up in the same neighborhood, yes. Yes, I used to see your dad from across the township, maybe that three, so four kilometers down, and we used to wave at each other, and mm-hmm. we were friends. He used to come um, t- to my house and walk with me to school because I thought... He played a friends. long game. What a nigga. Yeah, no, no, no. Long he, game. Uh, too, too long. <laughs> that, yeah, no, two, eight years. Listen, trust me. Mm-hmm. I went on a date recently with someone that, that asked me out when I was 15. This is 20 years down the line. Mm-hmm. He's asked me on a date, so... Has he been playing the long game? Uh, I don't know. I actually haven't asked him, but... Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> In the last 15 years, 20? have you guys... 20? No, we never spoke. N- I, but not I, a friendship, not a DM. Nothing. Yeah, I'm no. realizing he was in my DMs. I didn't mm-hmm. know it was him. Because, you know, people will decide they're going to call themselves user 139 or whatever. Um, um, yes, so he, yeah. was, so he, was, he was in my DMs, I realized, and I'm like, oh my gosh, so I understand the long game thing. Okay. Um, if, but your dad was an active player of the long game, yeah. not this guy that I'm talking about. Anyway, long games. <laughs> long games. You want to ask like, him, It's okay. It's okay, you can. I'm going to ask him later <laughs> because actually you need to advise me on this one. Um, you then go and join YFM. But I think what people don't know about your time at YFM and the time of I always say the 2000s of that time. You guys are the 2Ks of that time. Because you were the young ones at Y. Mm. You were the the young cool ones. How was that experience of... Here's this beast of a radio station that that defines what youth, black youth culture is. Mm -hmm. And being a part of that. How was was that time? Look, I think when I was 17, I heard of YFM. Mm. Maybe uh, 1997. Mm. A friend of mine came through and was like, yo, there's this radio station. They play the kind of hip-hop that you like. The the whole whole day. day. Yeah, Yeah. you know. The whole day. And there's no ads. YFM had no ads at that time. Not Mm. even DJs. So So they're just playing music. Yeah, when they first launched, it was just music. But they played the best music ever. Now, fast forward. This is 97. In 2002, when I was 22, I got a call from someone and they said, we know you can DJ, but yeah. you're not a DJ. We just need someone to fill in for a slot. Mm. And we know you ain't doing shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, come through. So I was like, okay, let me check my schedule. schedule? At that time, I'm packing. <laughs> let me check the crates. I'm filling my crates with records. Made it. And then I played my set, Bad Boy, Bad Boy T, Thomas yeah. Msenga, and I was like, no, 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 uh, please come back tomorrow, because this person can't make it tomorrow as well. Oh, my gosh. Mm. But I still remember the first song I heard when I walked into the YFM studios. Mm. That's, that's how powerful YFM was mm. then as a brand, mm. you know? I remember that first song. What I remember... It? I can't eat, I can't leave anymore. 
da, 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 I wish I did. Yeah. Mm. So, see, that's how powerful sure. YFM was as a station. That's how influential they were. Mm. This is one place that I don't even think I ever... Did I ever dream that one day I'll be there? Mm. I have no idea. I always whether say that. Whether I did or not. But when I got the opportunity yeah. to be there, I think I started living yeah. the dream. It wasn't a dream I had before, but the moment I walked mm. in, it felt special. It's also realizing you're part, and I guess you realize it years later, that, oh my gosh, I became part and was part of the fiber of this thing that was taking over. Yeah for young black people mm -hmm. and at the time it wasn't a dream you just wanted to play your vinyls yeah and and the crazy thing at the time is i think in 2002 i mean the the big names were already made like yeah. your bad boy tees your unatis mm. your dj fresh mm. dj spoo you know um because i also thought i would have never been called back so for me it was i am just i used to dj in my bedroom mm. You, you get what mm. I mean? So even when I went to a YFM, you know, it's it's radio. So you don't see people. You're just DJing. Mm. It's like you're DJing mm. in your bedroom. Mm. So you don't you don't know the impact mm. until... Mm. Until, until you, you get in. a gig. <laughs> Not even that, but I remember going back to Benoni and people were like, you know, somebody at the YFM uses the same DJ name that you use. Because I was too scared to tell people that I was DJing on YFM. Because I mean, I'm a very oh, shy person. Flip. So they didn't think it was you. They didn't think it was me. Because I'm very shy. And I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm yes, cut. Yeah, you really you know, don't. So I was very shy and I was like, Sh I, can't, I can't tell people I'm and it's DJing. Me. Yeah. So I bumped into a couple of people the following week. And they're like, there's some dude that uses your name. And he's tearing the streets of And he's like really <laughs> dope. <laughs> Um, I never even told my girlfriend at the time. And she was, she used to love radio. And I just kept quiet. I think I only, I think uh, uh, Bad Boy T, uh, Lee and Sansa only spoke to me on air, maybe after two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and my girlfriend called me and said, so what? are you <laughs> the naked DJ at Y? And I'm, and I'm like, is it the same voice? And I said, yes, uh, yes, I am. And yeah, so th that's, yeah, that's the story. Listen, all I remember about the YFM days, and I remember when I got to YFM, because also growing up as a young black person, you kind of understand the impact of it, right? Mm. Went to Varsity Radio, and when I got the opportunity to go to YFM, uh, it also just, for me, wasn't the dream growing up, but yeah. the opportunity when it came, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm about to be part of this thing. Yeah. Then it was the stories, because I'd always ask people at YFM, and even the older people that had been there, uh, but Shane, like, mm -hmm. how are these people? Yeah, Shane, yeah. You were apparently one of the, you were very shy, very quiet, mm -hmm. obviously, but you and Jaws mm -hmm. were running Joburg. And it was confirmed yeah. that even Waxy, in terms of playing hip-hop, yeah. you guys were like the three hip-hop DJs that were like, in demand. You know, we had, yeah, we, <laughs> we had it on lock. <laughs> I won't lie to you. Um, uh, yeah, we, we had the streets on lock at mm. the time. Um, and I mean, I was still, you know, part of the youth mm. and, mm. you know, the youth movement is so, is, is, is it, especially hip hop. It's mm. so influential. Mm. It's very you know? powerful. Yeah, it's very powerful. So we had, we were running the streets. Mm. I won't lie to you. <laughs> now a month, a month, um, at YFM, we had an, OB, an outside broadcast, yeah. and we, we got to the school and kids were asking me to sign on the like, school uniform. Yeah. Now, this is a month at YFM. So you can understand how it, this was so unbelievable. Mm. When I got home, I'm like, Mama, I'm, like, school I think kids I'm really were asking me to <laughs> sign on the school uniform. She was like, oh, but let go school uniform. <laughs> As a mom. You know, so, yeah. Great opportunity. I, I don't think I can ever yeah. thank the opportunity that I was given. Yeah. Um, I was never a YFM employee. Yes. Nobody knows yes. this. I was not a YFM employee. But, you know, Greg pulled me aside yes. and he said, look, even though you're not an employee, this is what we you're can part do of for thing, you. Yeah. You are part of the family. Mm. But this is what we can do for you. And we can give you the platform. And mm. it's up to you to actually run with it. 
So that opportunity as a 22-year-old, sure. I'll forever be immensely grateful to to Thomas, bad boy T4, mm. for, for asking me to fill in for mm. someone um, and for welcoming me, treating me like a younger brother, mm. to Lee also for welcoming me with open arms mm. and Sansa as well. Um, you know, Sansa uh, Mswati. So when he found out I didn't, I hadn't DJed in Swaziland. He was my mm. the first person to get me a gig outside of South Africa. So wow. all those little things, we were such a tight knit family. There's there's a lot of people that say that when you ask them about that time of of entertainment, right, mm. and how everyone and I guess it was a new thing for a lot of young black people. Mm -hmm. Everyone was just moving as like one unit. Yeah. Um, Naked Nights, for example, mm -hmm. which I f for me. Legendary. You remember Naked Nights? I never went to Naked Nights. Yeah. I, was, I was in school. <laughs> How old but were you? I, Naked Nights, I think I was in first year. Oh, ah, come no, on. No, I wasn't going out. When I was in first no. Really? It, varsity, I used to go home every weekend. And we made sure we the venue was close to the reses, like Verds, yes. UJ. It was in the heart of where the youth was. Naked Nights, I remember thinking, the first thing I thought was, these people are partying during the week. Because I need to, that's a fresh from school, so you think you're partying as weekends. But there was, a, there was a, a thing and a rush that it created. That's why I'm talking about people moving in a unit. Mm. That the celebrities of the time were like, they're going to naked nights. Yeah. This is the party to be at mm. if you want to rub shoulders with these people. It, it was crazy because I'd be driving somewhere and hearing people that I regard as yes. celebrities talk about naked nights. Yes. Yo, I was at naked nights last night. And... I mean, that, that whole movement was so crazy. And yep. that club was so big. I think there were people that would... would um, there were secret entrances, entrances as well where, um, you know, certain celebrities that were married yes. and didn't want to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> and they want to ask a man. Uh, this is way before uh, this. I was still a little boy, uh, you know? So, but it was, it was crazy. And I remember the, the likes of DJ Smoo talking mm. about Naked Nights on radio. Um, uh, yo, and I could not believe that mm. that guys that I did not know personally were, you know, just intentionally going on mm. air, promoting mm. something which was which was mine mm. without being asked, mm. and that's when I saw that, hey, this this is a group of young creatives mm. that are about making that money, mm. but putting each other on as well. Mm. They actually helped me grow not only the Naked Nights brand, but the Naked DJ mm, brand as well. Mm. Mm. But, but what a lot of people wouldn't know is that the Naked DJ brand was also always alongside the Euphonic brand. Mm, yeah. W were you guys like friends that are pushing each other or was the duo building? <laughs> so I'm from Benoni. Yeah. Um, I, so I'm from Faramir in Benoni. If oh, you, my friend's from Faramir. Yeah. Shout out, teams. Yeah. So if you cross the... the Oh, I think Kaboma is also from Faramir. Yes. If you cross the highway, you're at the more affluent part of oh, the yes. verbs, which is where Euphonic is from. <laughs> yeah, you hear it in the accent. St. Dustin's boy. Was <laughs> so Euphonic was actually my younger sister's friend. Okay. And he used to come to the house, and he, and he was like, oh, so... Your brother DJs mm. in the bedroom. And they were like, yeah, he's always messing around. So when it was time for gigs around the neighborhood, like, you know, pens down. Yes. End of term Ooh. parties. So then they would also come to me and say, dude, we need someone to play hip-hop. Because mm. I've always played hip-hop. Mm. I've always played what I love. Mm. So then I used to do the hip-hop part of it. Gonje, Euphonic was part of a group called Bad Enough. <laughs> Bad Enough Crew. Yeah. <laughs> so it was Euphonic and some cat called Ninja. You know? I love the mm. days when people had names with, for their crew. Yeah. Yeah. Bad Enough Crew. That was Euphonic Ninja. Um, hi, un, un Ninja would take the equipment and go DJ at church parties. <laughs> And we wouldn't understand that. We'd be like, dude, hey, Tina Lente, see, push her. The baddies are waiting. I sang on in the song, though. You know what I mean? So that's how it started. Um, Benoni uh, tennis courts, pens wow. down parties. Um, you know, when I got my first car, then I think your is like three years younger than me. So how we would start gigging is. Um, you know my hatchback, the the back seats. Sorry, yes. sorry, the back seats slide down. Yes. So we'd put all the vinyls there, put 
the turntables there yes. with the drive out around Benoni. Then we started getting a little bit bigger, a little yes. bit bigger. Then the girls at Springs Girls High would book us as well. Uh, you love <laughs> Springs Girls. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's been told and that's a Springs Girls. Not told and that's a Springs Girls. Let's not mention, let's not mention names. Hey, but Tina. yeah. <laughs> I don't even think we charged the Springs Girls. <laughs> Listen, I'm shocked they were even allowing that because we never had any social. No, things. the the things on the side. Oh, not okay. at the Oh, about the deliver for Hamas Gaziba. Yes, Ah <laughs> Gaziba. Yes, exactly. Yes. So that's how that's how we start. Mm. A lot of people think Google said, no, you start at the top. No, mm. you start at the bottom. You you fo- you and I still laugh about certain things now. Mm. Remember. We are the first people to get there. Mm. We would literally pack the stuff at home, then drive to the venue, unpack the stuff, connect the stuff. Now you need to DJ even before people before get there. Before other DJs get there, before yeah. everyone. No, 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 no. The DJs, it was Angisha. Now I'm it part was of, just the three of you. Now, now I'm part of Bad Enough Crew. Yeah. Because <laughs> then there was also not this thing of one, one hour sets that oh. DJs do. Mm. We had to play the whole night. So if you're six to six, <laughs> we each have about maybe four hours to play. Oh, my word. You know? um, but I'll forever be grateful for those nights mm. because that's what built us. Practice makes perfect. Mm. You spoke about a car. There's an there's a infamous car of yours that everyone mentions, the lowrider. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I miss my lowrider. <laughs> Hey, hey you were a big pimping in that one. Yeah, my 1968 Chevy nice. Caprice. Yes. Mm. Apparently it was the envy of the streets. No, I mean, it's got two back seats. Come on. Come on now. <laughs> you know, even when you're in the front seat, it's still the back seat. <laughs> oh, the thing is, is my son going to watch this? People don't watch this oh, Please. Yeah. I mean, oh. and I mean, that was still Naked Nights days. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I, the things that would happen <laughs> in the car in the car and as a very shy person mm. now the weirdest thing is people think i'm a naughty person mm. so they approach me with that mentality gandhi mm. mina i'm just but you're a shy naughty mm. person you you have a very naughty energy and a shy energy oh so people would think i'm naughty so then they would Make get into my car anyway, thinking, was oh yeah but, was mm, but i talk a lot so people would actually act those things out. Yeah. I think I think maybe I would spark the fantasy. Yes. And then when they see me, like before Naked Nights, I mean the low rider, then yeah. They like like come crazy on. things would happen. But because I knew that it was a perception of me, yeah. then I I I had to take one for one the for team. The <laughs> oh naked yeah. DJ with me on moments of months. This has been a fun conversation. Now We've spoken about your shyness and, you know, all these other things that we've mentioned. Uh, but you also got married very young. 26. That's, 26, for me, that's young. In, yeah, if you, in 2023, yeah. that's young. Okay. How but are, back then, ah, oh, come on. 18, 18, that was 18. wrong. Ah, uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> your grandfathers were predators, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, getting married at 26, what would you say now you've learned about marriage? When you look back, right? Uh, you're what? much older and wiser. You know, I've been married twice. You right? twice, yes. We're yeah. gonna come to the, the rest oh, of your okay. life. Oh, so my marriage. Is, <laughs> we are segmenting the marriages. Compartmentalize the marriages. Wow. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, but oh, let's, let's actually just gloss over both of them at the same time. Mm. Getting married young and then giving it another shot. Mm. Um, how was that experience for you? I don't even look how I view it. Mm. It's not really getting married young. Mm. I got married to the person I loved. Mm. And mm. I had a child with the person I loved, mm. you know. So age had nothing to do with it. And I learned a lot. Um, I think with her, she's the one that felt, because she was five years younger than mm. me. So when I was 26, she was 21. Mm. And I understood that maybe part of the divorce as well was her mm. feeling that she hadn't lived her life. 21 is young. Mean? Yeah, 21 is very young. Mm. So I even think that's why we still have, we have a great co-parenting relationship, relationship. Yeah. um you know even sometimes when we meet up at let's say my son's school mm. or we have to go for visa applications mm. for him whatever we we still good peeps mm. um sometimes you understand that you 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 understand why 
Mm. You had to mm. go your separate ways. Mm. And that's the most beautiful thing. Mm. That we understand why we had to. Mm. And it doesn't mean that we hate each other. We just understood. And maybe you were just coming together to have your baby. He is a blessing. Mm. Um, yeah. Because, uh-huh. he's look, he's my everything. And the weirdest thing is, I even think my son matured long before I matured, you know? Um, mm. Like, after the divorce, just sitting with him, just him and I, talking, and how he was very proud of the, the Masina name. Mm. Um, when I would come back from gigs and just pass out, I'd wake up mm. in the morning with a blanket over me. In the night, and I'm thinking he's just six years old. You know, so he's always had my back. He's, he's actually, he's also very soft. Mm. Um, you know, every every day, even t- today, uh, after work, how was work? Are you okay? Is everything okay? He's very lovely. Oh man, what a warm yeah. child. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He's very warm. One of the best things ever. So, I'd actually say he saved my life, and he helped me get over the darkest parts of my life mm. that I had to go through. What are those? Oh, well, the other divorce as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, he, you know, he's, he, he, he's my ride or die. You know, he's my mini me. Uh, you know, he's, yeah, he's my everything. Do you want another mini me? Because how old is he right now? Can you believe it was he's 17? Come he's on. turning 18 Come in on. Like four months. <laughs> I think I do. I th- I am I'm very broody. Yeah. Mm, and because I'm at the point in my life right now where I'm not doing a lot of running yeah. around. Uh, he was actually very fortunate as well that I worked three hours a day during mm. the day. So I got to go to all the sports stuff. Most of the time I was the only father on yeah. the mommy's groups at school. Because <laughs> I'm sure after the divorce, because yes. um, his mom moved overseas. So oh, I was single. So you were the... Yeah, I was like the, you know... Immediate caregiver. Yeah, you know. Um, so he was very fortunate. Mm. And I think right now, because I'm very fortunate as well that I don't have to run around and work mm. as hard as I used to. Mm, I want to be able to do everything, to go to those school plays, mm. to go to the those sports, to mm. pick up mm. my, my kids, to go to... There's something that he does drama. Mm. And I was never into drama when I was growing up because wow. it was like, so if I need to do drama, it means I need to study at school and then still study And then study script. scripts, yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> One thing has to go. Mm. So he does it. And when I go watch he, him act mm. at night, I'm like... Why didn't I ever do this at school? Because this is so this is so dope. Also, it's a great expression for any creative child yeah. to have at that young age. Yes, yeah. So, so I I want to have kids, and I want I want I want to be that supportive parent that encourages them to do everything, mm. and I want to be there for everything. Mm. You know. Oh man, naked! You want to be there for everything? Let's talk Netflix. Netflix and chill. Netflix and chill. (laughs) Okay? You get approached to be on this reality show. I don't think a lot of us saw that coming. Because what you've always been, and I think maybe it's on us to put that on you, Mm -hmm. is the hip-hop guy, but also the radio Mm -hmm. loyalist. I mean, here's Naked DJ on on Netflix. How did that come about? (sighs) So, people forget that radio in Africa has the biggest reach, even yeah. more than social media. So I think when, because of Ask a Man, Ask mm. a Man being one of the biggest <sighs> listened to segments on radio, one of the biggest podcasts in South Africa, yeah. it was only right that I was approached yeah. for it. I was approached during COVID. Okay. So when you're an entertainer and you're not making any money... <laughs> There's a money opportunity. Mm, you know, not even a money opportunity, but it's like uh, you get to do something. Because yeah. cause with COVID, I was only leaving the house to do radio. Mm, mm. Now, they called me, da, 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 this is what we're going to do. And I was like, okay, mm. cool, let's go. I would have never done reality TV. 
I think the first reality TV <clears throat> I experienced was my sisters. Yes. They had a reality show on ETV back in the day. And I loved it because... But was it something I, uh, fame? Blame it on fame. Blame it on fame. It's actually, isn't that... Ironic, blame it on fame, and then now it's young, young fame and yeah? African. Yeah. yeah. So, seeing what they had to go through yes. on the reality show, I would have never. It's a lot. But during COVID, when you're sitting at home, yeah. like, come on, dude, I was cutting my grass like every two days. That's how yeah. bored I was. When I got called to, to audition, or I was like, no, cool, let's do this. Mm. Crazy thing is, so now the country opens up a little bit, I think, level three. Mm. Um, so I start gigging a little mm. bit more, more events. And then they're like, oh, yeah, I remember that thing that you said you would do and signed up for. Is that <laughs> and, I'm like, and I'm like, damn. You're like, I signed up, I signed up mm. to Morehile. You know? Um, and, I, and, and I said, and I asked Kaylee, I said, yo, there's this thing that's coming up. They're going to... Come, you, you, my family, mm. even people, ask them both. Mm. You guys, you wanna, you wanna try this? Kaylee actually mm. said no. Pure was like, yes, we're <laughs> doing this. Yes, we're doing. <laughs> Kaylee's like, so they're gonna our personal life? No, I'm not comfortable with that. And I said, no, 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 don't worry. It's you know, it's just. Just a couple of people are gonna hey. watch it. She didn't know it's the whole. Hey. It's a global. A thing. global production. Mm. Yeah, and that's how it that's how it happened. So season two comes right, mm. and uh, uh, my niece who's assisting me today, shout out mm. girl, shout out limbs. Um, my niece says, <clears throat> "Oh my gosh, when you when you do interview naked, you have to ask him about the proposal or trial proposal. Mm. What does it mean? You confuse the children. Uh, What's the, a trial proposal? It's a trailer proposal. A like, trailer. Yeah, I mean when you go watch." How do you know? Like that a movie trailer. Yes. <laughs> How do you know that you're gonna watch a movie? You watch the trailer and you're like, okay, maybe this is a good. Movie to <laughs> because there's a there's a, a, a concept that I read about called, uh, I think it's a beta marriage, right? Mm. Where you you live together, you do everything that married people do without signing mm. for like two years to test the concept of marriage for See? you and that person. Yeah. So it's that. Kaylee had always wanted reassurance from me. I need to tell you about DJ. No, really. Yeah. I mean, okay, lose throw. <laughs> I'm a DJ. No, thank you. Yeah, so she wanted reassurance. And a lot of people will say, she kept on saying to me, I don't think, I don't think that you love me. I don't think you love me enough to commit to me. Mm. And I always said to her, I love you more than anything. Mm. But remember, we need to build. I know where my other relationships went wrong. Mm. And this is not just marriage, mm. but it's, mm. come on, guys. And it's, it's, also, tra it's, also, yeah. tra it's also a trailer mm. to, do I really want to be with this person for the mm. rest of my life? Mm. Mm. So with her, she was like, no, you'll never do this. You'll never commit mm. to me. I never picture you even proposing to me. Mm. And I'd always said to her, you don't understand that. I am ready to do all these things. I just want us to be in the right space. Mm. So the trailer for me was everything that you want me to do, I can do mm. it. Right? I, wow. can. I can do it, but when we are ready, I'm not going to jump into it. What happens if my two previous marriages ended because I was too hasty mm. to get married? Mm. You get what I mean? So... You learn a lot of things from Umjol. And unless you learn certain things, you'll always carry on making the incorrect same decisions, same mistakes, and you end up living every day like it's Groundhog Day. Like every what day is the learned? same day. What have you learned from, from your previous marriages, from relationships that didn't even get to marriage, mm -hmm. uh, that you can apply into this relationship and moving forward in a committed you know, marriage? <laughs> I've learned that your... Like me mental, your mental health comes first. Yes. Like yeah, you, you are the most important person mm. in any relationship. Mm. So make sure you okay with yourself first, mm. guys. You have to love yourself. Mm. First. And if ever you get into a relationship and somebody says to you, "Oh, man, I die without you," you must be like, "Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. no, no, no." Then fix yourself. Mm. You know, you you should be able to be strong. Mm. 
by yourself. You should be able to love yourself. Because mm. when you love yourself enough, a person that comes in and tries to dribble you, it's quicker to let people go. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah, when you love yourself enough, it's quicker to let people go that don't contribute to your life in a positive way. Mm. Um, and there's not that thing, Yoguti, if this person leaves, my world is, yeah. is going to yeah. fall apart. Yeah. You get what I mean? So that's what I've learned. Do you think and you were codependent in your previous marriages or, no, or previous relationships? No. Okay. Uh, not really. Okay. I just think Uguti, we were all, the, actually, like when I say all, when people <laughs> think Uguti, my marriage was one marriage and even chat about one you know I want to buy. <laughs> Look, they'll choose to misunderstand. Mm, yeah, at those different times, I think w we were we were a little bit immature about certain mm. things. But um, and it, and it's so weird when your relationships with these people mm. grow stronger after marriage, mm. and then that's when you realize it. Oh. We just did things mm. a little bit too quick. Maybe actually I liked you because you're a good person and I felt yeah. good about around mm. you, but maybe marriage was too early. Yeah. Or should have been off the cards for us. Yeah, it should have been off the cards. Because sometimes you're like, hey, even though we the divorce was a little bit shaky or mm. the separation was shaky, I still I still love this mm. person. Mm. I still love this person more than a lot of other mm. people. And then you sit down and you say, Without this person, I would have. I wouldn't have learned this. Mm. Without this person, I would. I wouldn't have learned that. Mm. And you realize that everybody in your life. Well, I, not everyone, mm. but Mina. For me, the the women that have been in my life have been blessings. Mm. But maybe it's because Mina always look at the glass half full, half full. all all the time. I have taken a lot of positive, um, a lot of positive from dating. Than wow. negative, you know, yeah. Even the people on Instagram that I never admitted, which I dated them, but <laughs> oh yeah. my, uh, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Do I know them? Hmm? Maybe not. Ah, uh, uh, come on. <laughs> mm -mm. What are you want too much? <laughs> <laughs> you see my friends when yeah. I'm home at no, night. No, no, but every ev every single relationship yeah. that I've been in. I've learned something yeah. which has made me the man that I am today, mm, mm. you know? And I have something positive to say about every single person that mm. I've dated. I've taken, yo, there's, there's great people out there. Mm. You know, there's great people out there, but hey, hey, hey you know, Guban or yeah, too, Saman, yes, yeah, mm. too. So let me ask a man right now. Mm. Um, uh, a lot of people have also said, you know, uh, and I've seen this on social media, even before I came to Metro, that uh, what position do you have being the man that we ask mm. if you have, if you're a return soldier? Mm -hmm. uh, well, how can we ask you anything concerning either people's relationships or marriages? Um, have you seen people say that? And what's your take on that? Um, I've, seen, I've seen negative comments. Yeah. I've seen positive comments, but I'm not shaken by mm. negative comments. Mm. And sometimes I'm also not shaken by positive mm. comments because, you know, when I grew up, my mom loved me. So mm. no matter what you say about mm. me, it, it's neither here nor there. Even no matter how much you try to inflate my ego, mm. I was also taught to Wuti, don't let the streets inflate you. Mm. You are here. Everybody is the here. same. Yeah. Remain here. You know? Um, ask a man. Mm. Are you not a man? <laughs> you, you know, I'm a man that has had great experiences. Mm. I'm a man that has had negative experiences. And, and sharing. Can I not share? Yeah. And the weirdest thing is, I, I'm also one man that I will share my bad experiences, mm. which I've done mm. openly. Openly. Yeah. So, you know, um, and sometimes, hey, you know, I always, there's this thing that we will we'll always say to our friends with, hey, or to our children, you no, know, I've, crawled so mm. you can walk mm. so sometimes i look at it that way mm. see, yo dude i've been in a messed up situation mm. and if i can be a voice on radio behind mm. the microphone that'll prevent you from getting into that mm. situation you know who in fact to, you having know, to had failed relationships mm. kind of also gives you a better standing to say i've 
by the way, the route you're going, mm. I've been there. And the weirdest thing, um, the way we use words is actually very powerful. Mm. I've never used the term of the relationship. Okay, failed. failed relationship, okay. You know, the relationship failed me. <laughs> You gave it to all. Ga- <laughs> yes, exactly, guys. I like that. <laughs> and this is this is everyone. Even yeah. you know, I can sit with my ex right now. Yeah. And say, you know what? Uh, it's the relationship. Yeah. It the relationship fails. Yeah. You know how can we sit and encourage each other? Still push yes. each other. Still love yes. each other to a certain yes. level. So as people. It, maybe as individuals or even as a unit, we're not failures, but this thing that we were trying to do yeah. is what couldn't work. Yeah. Something else that you did that worked, I heard a song <laughs> that I loved so much. Mm. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> um, you might not know this, but uh, um, you should know this. Um, you rap. I used to. Yeah. <laughs> Which song is this? <laughs> <laughs> the song, yeah, the DJ's rapping. Oh, the one with Jaws. I love yeah. that song so much. Um, but I know that you've done music before with your mm. brothers yeah. um, as well. I've done music with everyone. Um, <laughs> look, uh, I think we started off with It Rocks was the biggest one in 2003. Yes. Oh, actually, it's 20 years of It Rocks uh, right now. Oh, this is when um, SA Hip Hop was still breaking yes. into the industry. So, look, we've done a lot for... SA hip hop even mm. behind mm. even behind the scenes. Um I've been on uh, songs that have you know gone on on albums that have gone on to win summers. Yeah. Come on, I'm on the East Bam Som Dogo remix Yaga Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, um and I think I'm the only DJ that raps on that particular Wait, song. Wait, you rap on that song? I'm the first one. Which fi- I don't remember how that song goes. You guys remember the Flapper song? Flapper says, Puna. And then, uh, Benny Shelly in the score was shining as Pong, or stomach out, Vele is born. I just like to give my eyes like Sana Urongo. <laughs> yeah, that's me. You know? Um, Hectic. I've, I've actually done a lot of cameo appearances. Yeah. Um, I think it's because people like my a little bit of my wit and humor. Yes, I would use that yes. in songs. So they used to always say, the weirdest thing is, they used to always say, no, 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 call Fortune and Ramesh's little brother. Yes. He'll do it. Hey, we need a rapper for this. No, 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 no call Fortune and Ramesh. Because Ramesh and Fortune too. are the ones that are like in hip hop, but mm. you were coming in with your wit. No, but also it's how I also got into the, mm. uh, like with even DJ. Because mm. when they would have freestyle battles at, home mm. my mom and dad's garage who do you think was playing those instrumentals because they were like okay we're about to battle so you need to learn how to dj that is this so is, hectic you need to learn how to dj yeah. so you can mix the instrument the instruments together while we battle so that's how i learned how to dj that's it's so not because dope. i wanted to it's because i was you were supposed to your brothers mm, no you know big brothers will do that <laughs> Um, even even the um, me filling in for somebody at YFM, yes. it was, I think one of Thomas's best friends, Ulungelo, rest in peace, Lungelo. Um, Lungelo used to be a flight attendant, and he called my brother to say, "Hey, Fortune, you do you think yeah, we need somebody to do it?" And they're like, "Yeah," and you know, call Fortune and Ramesh's younger brother to do it. So I was always the guy that would do stuff, but. The weirdest thing about how my brain worked is for some strange reason, once I watch something or grasp it or know, oh, in order to be a great rapper, you, mm. need, you need to use words this way. Mm. My brain would actually morph into that. Mm. In order to be mm. a great DJ, you need to do this. Then mm. my brain would say, okay, let me get into mm. great DJ mode. Mm. And in order to be a great uh, reality TV star, Come Shabba on. trailer proposal <laughs> to have people talking. So it's the That's weirdest. what you do. It is the weirdest thing. Mm. And sometimes being in my head is, it's, it, it, I even get entertained. It's, it's weird, but maybe <laughs> I'm quiet, but yes. even though I'm quiet, but my brain is working, yeah. constantly working all the time. Yeah. Oh, man. I, 
Uh, there's other things I do. There's too. so much let, that let, I use. Let, let me tell you one of the one of my highlights. Okay. I love. I consider myself as a radio. I considered myself as a radio producer for a very long time. Okay. I still consider. I don't know what people label me as. Yeah. But I like creating magic. Yeah. I think you found a way to just. I don't know uh, anyone if anyone at all. I've. I'm sorry, I've forgotten. I definitely don't know anyone that's managed to wiggle themselves into radio from the Thomas time mm. to really find their spot, right? And people can't say you are one or the other. You're not a DJ or an Oscar man person mm-hmm. or an audiogasm or a producer. I feel like you've just owned just being on radio mm-hmm. and yeah. finding ways to do multiple things. Um, look, I used to let my hands do the talking. Yeah. I was still a mixed DJ at YFM. Mm. When Bad Boy moved to Metro, mm. he said, yo, Q, if you want to move, le- let's go. Then when we got to Metro, he said to me, I know you don't talk much, mm. but what we're going to do in studio is we will assign mic five to you, mm. and we need you to just say one word mm. per three-hour show. Not one word, like just one just, sentence. Yeah. One sentence, you know? Because he would say, I hear you talking a lot of ish. Mm. That can enhance the show. Mm. It can enhance just one sentence. And that's how it started. I would literally say one sentence. They'd be in stitches and say, that's Mm. that's what we're Mm. we're looking for. And I'm like, oh, okay. So just one sentence per show. Mm. Yeah, cool. That's what I did. I think your shyness is Mm. is your your selling point. It's, It's... your your shyness, your awkwardness, and your wit yeah. is what has created this brand that we can't put into words. One of the one of the biggest uh, characters, I think we we were the first mm. people to introduce a character to Metro FM. Mm. Who, no, ish, now I'm the cat's out the bag. I played one of the the biggest characters. So. I would be on a show, but there'd be another character, and that character happened. What do you mean? To be, that character happened to be me, but nobody knew it was me. What do you mean? So if there's like five, if there's uh, six people on a show, mm. Quentin Naked would be number five, but there'd be somebody else on that show. It would still be me, but nobody would know that it's me. Like, because so the play. listeners would assume there's six people. Meanwhile, there's five in the studio, but you're playing two. Yeah. Hectic. Mm. What was this character? No, I can't tell you the character. <laughs> and I've done, I think I've done, uh, I've done that. That is so hectic. Not only at Metro, but this I can tell you, because it's, I mean, it was just a campaign. I was even Captain Vault at some point, where I was Captain Vault at Metro FM, and on Roger Good, on Roger Good's show, I was also a character called Captain Vault, you know? So there's a that lot is of, so crazy. I, think, I, think I know Vault from Roger's show. I was Captain. What? I was Captain Vault on Roger's show. What do you mean? I need to hear Captain Vault's voice again. Yes, I was Captain Vault on Roger's show. But with Roger, I would flip my voice. Yeah. Using, using um, there's this thing I used to use. So I would get into studio, literally uh, unplug the mic put in the gadget so I can just speak, but it just it changes, changes my voice. But you still have to change your personality into Captain Vault. So I've been a lot of people. Mm. <laughs> and yeah. we just didn't know. No, nah, you just didn't know. And we just like, oh, lo, lo, when Manulo Vila today again. Mm. No, the, I've been, the team I've is been, rolling so low. Yeah, I've been without this person. Yeah, I've been a lot of, yeah, different people. What's I've the one in Nah, if I... I'm very happy. Where you are now on front row. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I have been a woman. What is this thing? Uh, <laughs> d- yeah. So that is I, so wild. So I love. Um, I I just love creating magic, mm. and radio is theater of the mind. Mm. So that's how I got told that that's what radio is. Mm. So the more that when I create that when I create that excitement or if you can close your eyes and imagine that mm. that's that's how when I get into the studio that's how I, I am every day I even think I approach Ask a Man in the mm. same way and maybe that's why the success of Ask a Man because it's probably one of the longest standing features uh, successfully uh, on radio because a lot of features just die down 
Uh, but you've done Ask a Man, you've done Metro, you've also listened to other shows. Do you have presenters that you listen to that you feel like this person gets it? Like when you listen to them, you're like, there's a long career that this person could have. And it could mm-hmm. be young people that are coming in. I really, I mean, uh, now this is the first person that comes to mind. Yeah. There's a lot of great, talented people yeah. in the station. Um I don't know if it's because I reached maybe a certain age and then I saw someone mm. very young and I was like, you know what, this person is really cool. Mm. But I really feel Sebi is so cool. Yeah, he's very cool. Mm. Sebi is so cool. He he, he also gets he gets it. Um a lot of new DJs or mm. people in the entertainment are of that instant gratification mm. thing. I remember uh, even to to work on my characters when you know I started at the SABC. Mm. I would work at the I would be at the SABC for about ten hours mm. a day to prep for a show which is three hours, mm. and then even the the day on the day then would be at the SABC at half past four mm. when the breakfast show started at six. Mm. Mm, you know, um, so there's a lot of prep that goes on that goes into it. Um, and people think you just switch on the mic no. and then the magic happens there. The magic happens way before. Successful shows are prepped for hours before you get what it is. I remember when I was at 947, Darren was still doing breakfast. Yeah, <clears throat> I was doing 7 to 10 in the evenings mm-hmm. and I would come in at half past 4, 5 p.m. He would still be there, mm. sitting in his studio, conceptualizing all these things. He's got the prank that he's also producing. It's not yeah. even because it's how he wants it to sound, mm. but it's hours of the team will be there, the team will leave, but the dedication of one person can make the entire show yeah. so successful. Yeah, um, I even think I, I did pranks on when I used to work with Penny Liliane. Take, take. Uh, and Leko Motion. Leko used to broadcast from Durban, Penny mm. from, and I would be the guy pranking. I had, I even had soapies when I worked with Azania. Mm. Mm. I forgot what the I name was. Soapy. Soapy. Yeah, I, I had a soapy where I flipped the term "days of our lives" into something else, man. <laughs> uh, where every single day we would have a like a, a, a two minute, and the soapy would continue. Oh, we had it during. It was during the month of love, like every February. Mm. Oh, and can I cuss? Yeah. So we used to we used to say. Let me close your ears. <laughs> we, like, Kanjo, these days of our lives, these are the whatever, whatever, whatever every February. You know? <laughs> and, and, people, and the weirdest thing is we'd say it like that, but nobody, no would, pick no one would pick it up. Because that, like, that was the missionary moment. Mm. So with us, <laughs> that was call it, yeah, every February we'd have our soul pee on, on radio. And I'd flip characters sometimes if... That is so dope. Let's say, I mean, I remember then... What I did is, at certain points, I would have Metro FM DJs mm. come in and just do a one-liner for me, da, 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 and I'd go downstairs, chop it mm. up, and, I'm, and I would just flip their names. And it was so creative because the listeners would know who Ultra Mel is. Mm. Mm. On the, it's mm. obviously mm. Mel. And I would flip names and create this little soapy. So... Mm. It was always just so dope creating and being able to entertain. But all that will be on air for a minute and a half. That's so but dope. it's taken you... Because now you have to write the script mm. first. Break it down to the day. Break it down, yeah. act it out. Where's the punchline? There's no punchline. Because I also don't regard myself as a comedian. Mm. But I really want people to laugh and mm. hear, you know? So it would take me six to eight hours to produce something which will be on air for a minute, a minute and a half. And this is even before podcasting, mm. so it would be forgotten. It would be played and then played out. Yeah, out. that hurts and me so much. Then, and, and I mean, this is just, remember, I'm still the producer of mm. the show, so there's still more to do. The prank will take mm. me six hours, but everything else will take me another three, mm. four hours. So, so after work, it's just working on just three hours for the rest of your day. Mal yeah. 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 But I'll, I'll forever be grateful for, for all this that I did because now I know how radio functions holistically. Mm. And I know how you need to respect a content producer. Mm. That a content producer mm. is not like you. That'll mm. just show up 
and yeah. lights, camera, action. There's a lot of research that goes mm. into stuff. Four hours. Your technical producer. There's a lot of stuff that he has to work on mm. to make this this uh, happen. Shout out, uh, given shout out, B and A, the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So you learn to appreciate the the people that they actually make the show that put it together. And remember, the people behind the scenes never get the shine. Mm. You know. But they yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> she just sh shout out, sent you a shout out. Mm. And so, if ever I had to give anybody advice with what they should do if they wanted to be a radio DJ, because a lot of people say, Yeah, I wanna be an, uh, I wanna be mm. a, a radio DJ. You like sometimes in order to be a radio DJ, you might have to start by uh, you know, uh being a producer, I was being a news. technical producer, you know what, mm. reading the news or mm. anything that you can do at the station, mm. be an intern. Ngena. Ngena. Just if when the door is mm. open a little bit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, your Jurassic Park looking as feet. Mm. Push, yeah. get in there, do whatever it takes yeah. because that thing that you do. Uh, you know, behind the scenes mm. could be, it's actually what's building you to be able to take everything or all the blessings mm. that will eventually come to you. And they'll come to you, it could be five years, it could be 10 years, it could be 20 years. Mm. But, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Your longevity is something that we can really take a, a, a page out of. All Even that. in the bedroom, shout out to oh, all Oh, you, you know, lost and lost. That's right. Are we, are yeah. we finding out now? I didn't know. <laughs> Shout out, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's just like, you with you, that one. Mm. She's going to be like, what? Like, be what nice, Kelly. <laughs> be nice, okay? And that one time, it was only a minute because I'd been anticipating it the whole day, okay? Don't touch me on that. <laughs> Everyone has that. Don't worry, Kelly. Mm. <laughs> but your longevity in the industry and being able, I said this when I started, uh, being able to just evolve and move um, and not be stuck in one way of doing things. Um, how has it become, and what else can we see coming your way? Because you, you really have managed mm. to just, within just the industry, outside of the other things that you do in your personal businesses outside, yeah. but in the space that we see you and experience you, you really are very malleable. Um, mm. How have you done that? I think I need to shout out Glenn yeah. Lewis. It, um, Glenn Lewis and Wilson. Mm. Oh. Ah, Pro Wilson. Mm. The weirdest thing is these are the people that I have corridor chats with mm. when I see them. Uh, rest in peace, Bob Mabena as well. Mm. Mm. You know, I don't know whether I should call them mentors, mm. but just by being in their presence mm. and seeing how maybe they interact with with, with people in the industry, Yo, old people, young the fans. people, the fans. Yo. Mm everyone and just also watching how they've been able to uh sh what is it shape not shape shifting but you know morph and grow mm. and re rebranding look mm. and look at glenn mm. glenn is still on air mm. you know what i mean mm. after so and long and he's still gonna be on air mm. for a long time and he's still one of the mm. people that are really killing mm. it so i think having that influence in my life being able to sit and laugh with the uh, with the likes of Glenn, mm. um, being being able, Bob Mabena used to snoop us. We demanded that he snoop us mm. when we started working at at Metro because we respected him as a legend. Not even because he's not even a program mm. manager. He no, he wasn't. Respect you so no. much. Yeah, you know what he said. That is so. He hectic. said, "Oh, you want me to snoop you?" And he said, "You'll come Friday night." So every Friday night, we like I wouldn't take gigs, nothing. What? But just to be able to sit with. Bob Mabena, and to talk radio with Bob Mabena. So, mm, 2006, 2007, Friday nights, we would go to Bob's office, like when everybody's going home. So no that is drinks and, you know. But remember, he, wa he was also willing mm. to help. Mm. I think it's interaction with those people mm, that... Uh, 
that 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 was that actually was an example for me to see which you see how how humble they are mm. and how they also knew what they needed to spread mm. the knowledge as well and i do that a whole lot a lot of kids that have shadowed me on audio gasm mm. uh, have gone on to be head producers mm. at other radio stations mm. you know so the knowledge is not for for us to keep True. but for us to to spread and guys when you've when you've got that opportunity spread the love mm. and i think maybe that's what keeps you ungabi no mona keeps you young man that's why ni age ni age fast ganga ni ai ni vitiga fast you know mm. but when you see somebody that's willing to learn give them give them the time that that's what happened with me i was willing mm. to learn so people gave gave me, you their time yeah gave me their time and i think that's how the universe in return blessed them what's the greatest life lesson you've had have one orgasm a day at least at least zama ilo ilo uzame man yeah ucele nakume lucele yeah um that's a lot a day okay yeah Uh well I know for women but uh to know much take care of business <laughs> I think it's just ungabi nent ungabi nentliziyembi yeah just love and I think that's what I learned from my mom mm. just you know love your siblings love your friends love the community love mm. love everyone and yeah and that's how I go about with my life Do you have anything when you look back and I know a lot of people will be like no everything happened as it should and I know I'm one of those people but you have things that you look back and you're like I wish I could have done that differently whether it's personal or relationships or work related or you feel like um, I wish I could have handled that differently Oh actually I have um when whenever I talk about my siblings um a lot of people don't know about Ensi Ensi is my 8 month younger brother we okay. just we share the same father. Okay. So Ensley is an actuary and it's so strange like my dad always tried to push me like with maths. Mm. And, <laughs> and and the crazy thing is my brother that's eight months younger than me is an actuary. Yes. And sometimes I look at life like in the entertainment industry <laughs> and I'm like, "Ish, maybe I should have listened to my dad yes, Yo. and become an actuary because during COVID I would have been working or mm. when things in entertainment are slow I could have been doing this or left the country that. because the career that I've picked can allow yeah, you know mm. um but I won't lie to you uh the weirdest thing is I've been blessed so much and I mean just from hearing about how my career started mm. blah 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 mm. earlier on the weirdest thing is I still don't know what I'm put on this earth to do. I've done so much, but I still don't think Uguti there's one thing that I can pinpoint Uguti this is what I'm meant to do. I think I'm still I'm still to find that. Really? So it's not a regret. Yeah. But it's it's something that I'm still You're looking forward to, yeah. I'm looking forward to finding what my real purpose is. And you know what I, I always have a conversation with with a friend of mine about this conversation around purpose and how we all think we know because we base our why we are here on on family and jobs, mm-hmm. right? I'm yeah. here to inspire people and have a conversation where people can take from that or I'm here to but we a lot of us a friend of mine was saying that when we really look at the depths of what purposes we have here a lot of us can't really answer what that is yeah. and being honest and saying i'm here to discover what that is while i'm here it's cool because mm. you've also just built a life for yourself a beautiful life for yourself from a 22 year old yeah. that just got on wife to build yourself a life like this i think that in itself is testament to whatever purpose it is when you do find out it must be a very beautiful and inspirational purpose yeah I think it has to be something to do with changing yeah. people's lives. Um yeah. I'm not a deep person, mm. so I'm not going to give you a, a deep story, yeah. but it's just making people happy. And I think I'll find it. What would you say to young Quentin? 
Seventeen year old Quentin playing at pens down. When were you playing at pens down? Uh, yeah, between <laughs> seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Mm. In fact, let's go to ten year old Quentin, who was a child who was shy mm. and with very confident siblings, and you're just trying to find your feet here Hi, in guys. this crowd. Uh, I believe that people bloom when they meant to, mm. and I'm glad I'm a late bloomer. Mm. You know, uh, I'm glad we were papanga very early. Mm. I'm glad that I actually sat and learned so much. Mm. Mm. Young Quint, young Q. Oh, my other name is Quinan, so I've always yes, been called I like Q. the name Quinan. Yeah. Jeez. Um, as an introvert, I would actually say get out the house more. Because mm. when when my brothers and my sisters and my family used to go out, I, they used to call me the security guard. Mm. And my parents would be like, why is this person always sitting at home? Mm. And I think if I went out more, it would have helped maybe even in... Uh, enhance my career more than it is. I would have been more of a people's person. Mm. I would have learned... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I would have learned how to maybe close gig uh, deals quicker mm. as a businessman, mm. interact with people. Because mm. I, yo, yo, I'm very socially awkward. Mm. So I would, have said to, I would have said to the younger Q, when everybody's going out, go out. Put yourself out. Yeah, learn how to learn how to interact with people, mm. learn how to read, learn how to, uh, how to read people, learn mm. how to, um, learn how to make moves, mm. you know? Because, yeah, being shy is not going to, it's not really going to get you. It's not going to do anything. Yeah. It's just going to slow things down for you. Mm. To your siblings that you grew up really looking up to, right? Mm. And you're, you're very fortunate. I've got siblings and all my siblings have decided to go into this industry and that bugs me so much. Mm. For someone that has siblings that have been in this industry, what would you say to them? Um, the people that you've looked up to and that have looked up to you and you've moved across from personal relationship as siblings to working and colleagues and seeing the industry with different eyes but from the same home. Um, what would you say to your siblings? Hmm. What would I say to my siblings? Mm. Now. Yeah, like they're watching now and you're like, you know, Come on, guys. You know we speak. We speak every day. Uh, um, look, I, personally, I don't think I would be here if it wasn't for them. Mm. They they paved the way um, because they were they were out there more than me. Mm. They know how much. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can't say they know how much. I love you so much. <laughs> Yo, You're so uh, awkward. Yeah, apparently I'm like I'm like concrete. Uh, look, Forge, Ramesh, uh, Shelon Tando, Ensley, I love you guys so much. Mm -hmm. You guys have always had my back from day one. That's why I've always got your back. And it's with everything. It's you guys teach me, well, you try and teach me how to love. I look up to you for, for parenting mm -hmm. as well. They're the best parents ever mm. um mean i'm just winging it but when i see what you guys do even with how you parent my kid mm. as well uh best thing ever you guys are the best support system you, the, the the best siblings anybody could ever ask for mm. you you uh you you guys are the air that i breathe um you make me happy you've always made me happy and I love you lots. And I know that the love doesn't doesn't stop here. To all the kids, you know Uncle Q. Um, you mean everything to him. Uh, Piwe, my son. Ah, dude, Antoine, oh yes. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, I love you. Uh, I love you with every little piece of my being. I know you've got my back more than anybody in this world. Just love you lots. Mm -hmm. You and I against the world. Kaylee. Mwah. Support structure. Mm. Always got my back. Mom, dad. Yeah. 
I'm not good with the. Socks. <laughs> no, you can't. You can't leave mom and dad at yeah. Vusmuzi bongeni niantand. Without you, well, without dad uh, writing all those stories, mm. you would have never, you know, waited all those years. Mm. I'm glad with you after Fortune and Ramesh, you tried to have more kids. <laughs> And then you had me. me. Oh, you know, they wanted a girl. Yeah. And unfortunately, <laughs> they got me. So my parents were very disappointed. <laughs> that they even had named me. They named me Bridget. And <laughs> even when I was born, like, you know, my mom would say, you know, we really wanted a girl. <laughs> and we named you. Yeah, your name was meant to be Bridget. Well, and at the time, I'm like, Mama. God said you? twins mm. after that, so. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah two. Mm. So thank you guys for trying. I know I was a disappointment <laughs> at first. No. <laughs> But, you know, the weirdest thing about my family structure, mm. even when we were growing up, we spoke every day. Mm. We still speak every day. Mm. Um, I'm still in, the, like, I'm in a group with my sisters. I'm in a group mm. with my brothers. I'm in a group with the kids. Um, you know, we're in the family group. Mm. So it's all love. Love everybody. And thank you for the support and love that you show me all the time. And I, I've always got your back. Masina family. <laughs> Shut you know, up. The, our, yeah, we don't have a sign. Yeah. Is that an M? This is an M. Yeah. <laughs> this is an M. This is an M. Yeah. So Masina family, you know. I've given you a logo. So when you guys, because you you guys must are all entertainers, when you start a big production one day, you'll have two yeah. hands like this. It's for Masina. Oh, Masina. I think yeah, it's dope. There we go. Yeah. I think that's it's dope. dope. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. And if if right now, if it all ended, are you happy? Are you satisfied? Have you lived a life that you're proud of? I'm super happy. Yeah. I've lived a fulfilling life. I've loved, I've been loved. Mm. Um, and I know what I've, I always do leave um, an impression. Mm. And I, yeah, so if Putin and Biden were like, fuck it, let's press these buttons. And Yo, I... Isn't those Pele Manji? Hmm. I'm, I'm super happy. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. You're you're a really cool person. You're a really lovely person. And everything I've heard about you when I started working at Metro, I, mm. I saw. You're one of the first people that like was very open to me when I got there. So thank you. Um, I don't think you also realize the impact you have on people around you because you just want to work and leave and you're shy and you're in your own world. Um, but you're a very warm person. You've made a lot of spaces, I imagine, very comfortable for a lot of people mm -hmm. in your own awkward way. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, no, I'll loosen up and I'll become a better No, I think person. we love this. I it's promise. Fine. We I love promise. this. Ah, no, no, no. No, <laughs> no they, they don't. That's why even on social media, they're like, hey, 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 let's get rid of him. We don't know him. It's too hard. He's oh, too whatever. So, you worry about those ones. Mm, yeah, so uh, look, I'm learning this life thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be softer and I'll be more lovable, hopefully, before it all ends. Quentin Kinani, Naked Mapunapuna DJ. Thank you, thank you. That was so nice. Yeah. <laughs> it was so nice. Um, listen, comment, subscribe, everything, share, uh, and get this as far and wide as possible. I know a lot of people, Bongani Given, have been asking if they're able to download these episodes. So you heard me ask them because I see the comments all the time on Twitter, on YouTube. So I've asked them. And we'll find out if this uh, uh, episode will be downloadable. My name is Manzo Part. It's been so nice hanging out with you. This is Moments with Manzo. Bye-bye. Shout out, guys.